like even inside business schools, a lot of times students don't know that there is a financial planning program. And then worse than that is, uh, you know, like Craig Lemoyne, we'll mention him, you mentioned University of Illinois, right? Like they're in the agriculture school. Um, Texas Tech is not in the business school. Like it's actually more likely than not, it's not even in the business school. Mm-hmm. So then you got like uh, no chance on getting there, right? Like yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, farming right. and you're looking at Craig. Fragmented. Like, <laughs> Super fragmented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like why are we in the ag school again? <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Framework Podcast. I'm one of your two hosts for the episode, Jamie, joined by Anna here today. As always, Anna, great to see you. Good to see you too, Jamie. Also nice to hear you. (laughs) It is good to hear you on a podcast, being that, you know, most people do not just log in for my, you know, ever-changing facial hair and uh, hairstyles, right? They're always different. And uh, I do have this little bird here too, which is kind of fun. I've been playing with it a lot. It's, I don't know which kids it was, but it showed up in my office. It's like squishy and stretches. It's pretty fun. But stress uh, release bird? Is that what that is? <laughs> um, I don't think so because when you squeeze it like that, it actually kind of like a bubble pops out. So uh, you know, like I, it should not be squeezed too hard. It's just a little sticky too. So yeah, pretty fun. I know everyone's listening, and be like, "What is he talking about?" But yeah, I have a stress you know. release eight ball. Oh, I okay. did bust it though. I I did. I squeezed yeah. it too hard. Well, I should introduce <laughs> Mac because he's he is here and already chimed in. But Mac Gardner, uh, it, it, Mac, you do a lot of things uh, today. I think we're going to talk about uh, um, N N Y. Right is correct uh, letters there, so that's good. And uh, you know a little bit of your role there, but you do a lot of things. Um, I know. You, I think you've actually been on the show maybe two or three years ago, but we were talking about different things then. So it's been a while, but glad to have you back and uh, excited to hear about the new developments and what you're rolling out with the fraternity. And, uh, you know, it's really uh, making a lot of moves in this industry. So thanks for taking time out to join Anna and I here today. No, no, no. Thank you all for having me, man. Always an honor to join you both. Uh, Love the work that you both do. Uh, And yes, we are staying busy, uh, always in the vein of financial education and MNY fraternity is is just another offshoot of, I think, a huge demand uh that the industry needs and so we're, we're trying to fill it so looking forward to, to, to chopping it up with you all today super cool so mac you've been on the show before so you know we kind of like to get some insight into your first money memory so i know you probably already talked about that but t- tell us uh if you have another one that comes to mind that you want to share with our listeners yeah i i think money memories for me some some of the early ones uh are having conversations with my dad uh, I, I like to say that all we are at the end of our day is a collection of stories. And so if, if we're fortunate to have stories or have moms and dads or f- parents or family members that are in the financial services industry that shape some of our early uh, money memories. And so some of the first ones, like, I actually remember sitting down with my dad at the dinner table and talking about assets, liabilities, income expenses, like literally having conversations about, you know, <laughs> budgets and, 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 and leverage. I, it's, it's weird, but my dad got his MBA at NYU, was in corporate finance for years. And so those are the conversations that we had around the table. Well, that's a pretty good uh, way to start out, you know, to end up in, you know, fight the financial world is actually, you know, having a family member that can teach you some of it, right? That's pretty cool. It helps. It, it, it does. And uh, I, I spoke to my dad, you know, semi-retired now, and I always joke around with him. I was like, Dad, can you imagine I was almost a DEA agent? <laughs> I went to University of Maryland and, you know, studied political science and was interviewing for uh, to be the DEA or to go through a SunTrust management training program for corporate finance and, and, and lending. And uh, I, I guess I made the decision and uh, stuck with the, the, the family tree. Good old College Park, Maryland. <laughs> Go Terps. Go Terps. Come on, guys. So, Mac, did you have a first meaningful purchase that you remember making? My first meaningful purchase that I remember, like meaningful purchase, like meaningful purchase. Um, two things hit me, and I'm trying to think which one I want to share on the podcast. Um, 
but I, I remember buying my, I remember buying my first car, right? That was pretty cool. And the reason why it was so memorable for me, because I was going off to college and my mom just like put a chunk of money in my hand and was like, all right, bud, <laughs> go find what you need. Uh, and so I, I think that was, that was a, an opportunity for me to really sit down and say, okay, all right, this, this, this is, this is the first big, big boy decision that you're making with a, with a big chunk of money. Uh, so I, I think that was, that was a, the, the first sort of big decision, money decision that I made and, and hopefully. Made I always right think choice. back to the first meaningful purchase I wish I would have made. And it's definitely the makeup the time my cousin and I got caught shoplifting at King Supers <laughs> of Sheridan in 38th. You know, I wish I would have just bought it yeah, <laughs> in retrospect. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would have been a, a, a totally different experience for both of us in our lives. We a better financial decision, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A better legal decision. <laughs> yeah, but you it know what they say, been. right? Hmm. I was going to say, what it would have been Matt? better financial. You got it for free, so. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for that. I paid for that makeup. <laughs> A long time. Yeah, you, you know they say bad, bad decisions make for great stories. So uh... oh, yeah, yeah. My my cousin and I often get together for lunch and talk about that. Like I I still don't go to that King Supers. I am traumatized. I will never shop there. Don't want to go there. Don't. I get flashbacks every time I try to walk in. So, anyways, this isn't about me, Max. This is about the fraternity you started. <laughs> and so I'm I'm curious about you know you talked about how at the University of South Florida your students kind the students kind of wanted a place where they could belong and and something that they could come to and ask questions and things like that. And so you founded Mu Nu Upsilon, right? Is that the... So the yeah, Mu Nu Upsilon, M-N-Y. Okay. Uh, all pun intended, M-N-Y. It's supposed to look like money. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, I was going to ask about the significance behind why you chose the letters and figured the money, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so talk to us about you know that journey and, and founding the fraternity and what you hope for the future of it. Yeah, I... I Again, fortunate, blessed, involved in a lot of different ways in this business, 20 plus years uh, as an advisory, just, you know, helping people manage their money. In 2017, University of South Florida, we launched our personal financial planning degree program. So we're a relatively new kid on the block. Um, and they asked me to join the board and I, I got involved and I, I, I asked the students to say, hey, you know, what do you want? What, what, what would be something that you think would be beneficial? And the response that I got back was interesting. Like, you know, Mac, we would like something that was ours. And so it forced me to sort of look at the landscape of what was out there. And if you are a CPA student or if you're in finance or if you are even in insurance, those three career choices, uh, career path, they have professional fraternal organizations. And so I looked around at ours and I said, well, why don't we have one? You know, um, we are a relatively new, newer career choice. Uh, so I, I did the due diligence research and um, sought to to create a organization. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that really the mission is to help to serve students who are looking or interested in a career in personal financial planning and then seeing the breadth of the career and seeing that there's RIA, there's BD, there's insurance, there's banking, there's so many different facets to it. Uh, but but having an organization that's there to support them, to support the university, and and, and to help uh, help the financial services industry, who is in dire need of young people and more diversity, equity, inclusion, and awareness of the space. And so, tell me a little bit about uh, you know the guiding principles, Mac, that you pulled into this organization, and, and why you picked those in particular, right? The the networking, fundraising, education. How did you land on that? So the the number one pillar is is education. I you know Jamie, you and I have had these conversations for years, and as well, I, I believe that as financial advisors, we have an amazing ability to serve as educators in this space. In fact, a lot of times when we're engaging our clients, we're teaching them <laughs> about what to do with their money. And so uh, if you're going to have an organization that is going to be helping people and helping to build future financial advisors, financial planners, I think there needs to be a, a pillar of education and that needs to be what, what, what drives a lot of what goes on. Uh, second is is networking. Uh, we'd say ABC, always be connected, right? We are in an industry where the people that you meet 
are folks that you can help and that could potentially be a client. And so you can't be afraid to go out there and shake a hand. I like to say every friend was at one point a stranger. Now you just gotta be able to say, hey, how are you? How can I help? And the third uh, facet of it is, is fundraising. Uh, we want all of the members of MNY to not be afraid to ask for the business, not be afraid to go to financial institutions that want to help the communities to say, hey, we're putting together these events. All MNY chapters will be required to uh, provide five events, or five learning or education uh, events, banking, investing, insurance, estate planning, and tax management. Um, and so we want all the students to be very comfortable uh, talking about money and, and, and engaging uh, folks when it comes to making making money decisions. And that's helpful in all facets. Like you've you've been experienced as a founder, like with Finlet Tech and the, the three money bearers and all of, all of the things. And and that is a critical skill that you know a lot of people don't think they need to develop, but then it's really it comes in handy, right? <laughs> Yeah. For all that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and part, so, 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 sorry, one last thing. Part of, part of the, 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 the three pillars and those five aspects of what uh, MNY chapter uh, members are going to do, it's a combination of what the students need. It's also a combination of what the industry needs, right? Um, the industry needs people to be very comfortable networking, very comfortable educating, very comfortable asking for these things. And all those five areas, banks, investment companies, insurance companies, estate and tax, they all need young people to be able to come in and and uh, and, and fill those needed chairs uh, because our, our folks in the industry are moving out of the industry and retiring. So it, 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 was, it was all built to, to help serve uh, all the different components and all the different folks in need. Are you going to help kind of train them on fundraising techniques and asks? Is, is that going to be part of that, you know, I assume some education that you're bringing in for these fraternity members? For sure, for sure. And and how that's going to be done, Jamie, is it's going to be done through mentors uh, that are on the board here at USF that are going to be working with uh, the MNY chapter members to, to talk about, hey, how, how do you have these conversations? How do you get folks to to maybe make decisions and, and understand why they're doing it, the bigger purpose of, of their, their money? Um, so for sure, that's going to be a, a big aspect of it is coaching. Yeah. So I'm say, manage oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say USF has to have like a gigantic advanced, you know, giving group because they have just blown up in size and money that's flown. I mean, they, they've done super well and very impressive in the last decade on their growth. You, you, they have uh, just in the, the past, we, we moved here in 29, 2016. I got involved with them in 2017, just the five, six years, the, the growth has been amazing, Jamie. So you're right. And, and they are also very interested in what we're doing too, because uh, MNY, is part of USF PFP program. USF PFP program is part of the MUMA School of Business. And so the business school is growing. We are utilizing the fraternal organization to bring more awareness to even business students as well as university students that there is a degree program in personal financial planning. And the, the fact that we are growing and that we are getting a lot of national attention, I think can really, really help us in a lot of different ways. So Mac, in, um, wealth, in the article in Wealth Management that came out, Kate Healy was talking about, you know, just communities of color and how we're really into our fraternal organizations, right? Like I was in a Latina sorority and then, you know, it's a totally different system than like the mainstream Greeks and we are very like tied to it. It's very much part of our personality and who we are. Is that kind of something you're hoping for Mu Nu Epsilon, like to kind of um, have that community building and then, you know, they kind of promote it and promote our industry as well? Totally, a hundred percent. So we are working to strike that balance of being a professional, a co-ed professional fraternal organization. So we want to attract students who want to be in this financial services space, right? And and be leaders in that space. But we there is a huge social aspect of, of uh, fraternal organizations uh, and the things, the bonds, the memories, the ability, no matter what color of your skin, race, creed, language, 
a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, we can say, oh yeah, I, I was a part of the OSF chapter. Or I was part of the Texas Tech chapter. Or I was part of the UGA chapter. Uh, I was part of the KSU chapter, which are all organizations, which are all universities that we are currently speaking with to uh, to launch MNY uh, fraternity chapters. And so that's really what it is, is to be able to, to have that connection and remember, hey, remember when we did that event and we went to that national event and we went to that chapter event and, and, and build those memories and build those bonds. Because look, I like to say people care what you look like. People care what you sound like. People care where you're from. Money doesn't. Right. Money is just a tool. And so if we have an organization that is, is filled with people who are just about helping other people coach and manage their money better, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It matters about what's in your heart, what's your passion. And, and we want to have a network of of really successful advisors that are doing really, really great things for the community. And they just also have to be part of MNY fraternity. What are some of the trends? I mean, this just came into my mind, like what's working and what's not working with fraternal systems today that you you had to like think about as you headed into this, because, you know, some do really well and then you had others that have struggled. And so what areas and what things are working, what, you know, what are you going to try to do right here uh, in that system? Uh, great question, Jamie. I think there, there are always going to be organizations that thrive. There are going to be organizations that don't that don't do as well because of just what's going on in the economy, but what's going on in society. But one of the things that we are really hoping to take advantage of is the collaboration with organizations like FPA. So I'll be speaking at their uh, FPA national uh, conference in September. And when we were building this, I approached the leadership at FBA to say, please do not view us as competition. We do not want to be viewed as competition. We want to be viewed as an organization that's bringing more people under the tent, more young people into the tent um, and, and, and have it from a perspective of a, a platform that college students are more familiar with. If you're coming to school, you're coming to college, the first thing you say is, oh, okay, what kind of fraternal organizations are there so that you can be involved and, and, and make connections? And so that's why we're building it. Um, the other thing that I think that we can do a better job at is, is in speaking with leaders of PFP programs across the country is really to develop a organization that's driven by students. Of course, you're going to have to have some sort of university leader that's there, but driven by students that has both a local reach as well as a national reach. Uh, and that's something that we're gonna really work on. Like, look, the, just like you all, the network that we have in this community, having an organization that can pull all these people together to help support younger folks who are coming in and looking for guidance, looking to make these connections. That's something that I think we're gonna be able to leverage a lot more uh, working through these different organizations. And Mac, so like, I know like a lot of Greek Greek letter organizations, um, they are able to be part of both those and like the business fraternities and the fraternities that you talked about um, in the insurance industry and things like that. Is that is that this case with MNY also? Like are people able to do both, um, walk that line? Yes, we are. Okay. We're working to be a, again, a professional, a co-ed professional fraternal organization. So you have folks that socially, you know, I have a bunch of buddies that are Kappas and a bunch of buddies that are Alphas and uh, socially by all means do that. But they're also part of, you know, professional uh, fraternal organizations as well. So we, we definitely want them to be able to, to, to be involved in both. Right on. So how many chapters are, are you are currently in the works? And, and if, Two questions. And if like some program leaders are listening to this and want to bring a chapter onto their campus, how do they do that? Great question. So right now we have University of South Florida. We launched the USF chapter in the fall of 2022. Uh, the organization was started earlier, but COVID really messed a lot of things up in 2020, 2021. We're really trying to get things going. Universities weren't allowing uh, student groups to really have meetings on campus. So we started the first one, the USF chapter. Uh, we are speaking currently with um, Texas Tech University, uh, University of Illinois, uh, Akron, K-State, uh, University of Georgia, um, 
uh, Prairie View A and M, some some HBCUs that have a CFP organization. That's the other thing too. What we found is that uh, there universities that may not necessarily have a full-blown degree program, right, but may have a CFP certification program. Howard University is also one of them uh, that we're talking to to get involved. Um, and, and, and what we're building right now is actually the first ever our inaugural MNY Fraternity Scholarship Fund. So we are raising $100,000 to be able to provide 20 students with a $5,000 scholarship and that can go towards your undergrad, your grad, or your PhD, or a CFP certificate program. So that's really what we're looking right now to do is just get the awareness out of the organization. The movable middle are universities that have PFP programs. And if they want to get involved, we would be happy to support them and work with them. Yeah, it's super important. And the, you know, the scholarships out there in our industry are still fairly limited. Like if you look at other industries, there's a lot more scholarship programs. We, I mean, CFP board does some, FinServe launched theirs last year. Um, you know, FPA has a couple, but, and then you have some organizations, the Schwabs and others mm -hmm. and, you know, Vanguard's, uh, I don't know if Fidelity does, they probably do. I know BlackRock has a couple, but it's not like some other areas of the world where there's, you know, tons of scholarships, there's local scholarships, there's school scholarships. I mean, you go to schools, there's no scholarships set aside for financial planning, um, hardly anywhere, right? So it's yeah. uh, almost non-existent, which is that building that student base that then can help drive into that, you know, to me, like super important um, part of building all this up. And I love that you brought up like the FPA and CFP kind of stuff earlier is, um, I talk about it a lot, like, you know, when we talk about FinServe is like, there's no one organization that's going to be able to do this alone. Like we need like 30 organizations <laughs> that are all like full in. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like it's just, it, it, it's too big of a problem for any one group to solve, yeah. right? It's just, it's not going to work like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and you uh, brought... the... go ahead. Dan. No, go ahead. No, I just, I love that you said that, Jamie, because at MNY, we're looking at sort of five impact areas. That, that we want to be involved in in making changes. One is, of course, impacting supporting students. Second is, is impacting and supporting universities who want to do this, who want to either, who maybe have been interested in starting a PFP program, you know, um, but really hadn't gotten around to it, maybe some interest there. Third are going to be financial services professionals, those who want to mentor and give back. Fourth would be financial services institutions who want to give back and want to help support this. And the third one, which I'm finding to be extremely important, are our support organizations, CFP board, FPA, your FinServe organization um, that are looking for a platform to be able to engage these young people and, and, and say, hey, you know what, Mac, we've got all these different things. Can, can MNY be the, the, the poster board? <laughs> for all these different things that are going on. And that's what we're, we're, we're aiming to do and to help in that way. And I love that. That illustrates that abundance mindset we're always preaching about over here at Carson, right? Like it, you told FPA, we're not competitors. We want to work together to mm -hmm. kind of solve this problem. So that's, that's a great point to make. Um, but Mac, I was curious about um, kind of, were there organizations that you were part of, you know, in your college career that really made an impact that kind of maybe inspired this type of, of um, organization that you started? Yeah, I was, so when I went to Maryland, so sadly, the, the usual black fraternal organizations at the time that I was there were not active. Uh, they were suspended. Uh, so I got involved with the Caribbean Student Association. I got involved with uh, the uh, Black Student Union. I got involved with uh, an actual a fraternal organization that just wasn't Greek called the Maniacs, which stands for Men Achieving Nobility in Academics and Collegiate Societies. And for those of you out there who are fans of, of uh, cartoons and comics, but um, Aaron Magruder, the creator of the Boondocks. I don't know if you guys heard of the Boondocks, but he's actually my mm -hmm. frat brother. Um, so it, 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 we, we, I was involved in a lot of, I've always just felt that it's important to, you know, whatever you, you get in life to, to, to give and give something. Uh, and so, yeah, that, I think that's sort of what shaped my mindset going into my career. And, and definitely now that a few years in and 
being a part of USF board and seeing what our industry needs and, and making awesome connections with awesome people like you all to say, Hey, look, let's, 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 like Jamie said, let's all pull together. Let's utilize the resources we have, use the gray matter that we have and, and try to make some really neat things that can make an impact that'll outlast us. Yeah. The, um, you know, I think when t you think about like pulling organizations together and uh, I've talked to, you know, George Nichols at the American College about this, too. I, I think one challenge we have in our profession a little bit or industry is I don't really know who is pulling them all together today. Like that's been a that's been a challenge point, right? Like we have some really great meetings every once in a while. I think you are actually I think we were at some of those together at different points in time, right? The, like the wealth management one um, that Suzanne's helped put together a couple times, right? Uh, but we, we're still kind of lacking. I mean, you said like poster or whatever, but we are kind of lacking someone that centralizes this in our industry. Um, and especially for students, like, cause they don't like, I mean, we've all been around now 15 plus years. So we kind of know who's who, and there, there might be some resources, but for like 21 year olds, like they don't know any of these things exist. Mm -hmm. And so they really struggle to even know that there are these opportunities out there or options. And even, even to your point, like even inside business schools, a lot of times students don't know that there's a financial planning program. And then worse than that is, uh, you know, like Craig Lemoyne, and we'll mention him, you mentioned University of Illinois, right? Like they're in the agriculture school. Um, Texas Tech is not in the business school. Like it's actually more likely than not, it's not even in the business school. Mm -hmm. So then you got like uh, no chance on getting there, right? Like yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, in farming right. and you're looking at Craig. Fragmented, like, <laughs> super fragmented, yeah. Yeah, like why are we in the ag school again? <laughs> Cause that's the only school that would take you on. Like, no, literally, that's how it is. Yeah. And and the cost and 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 you know, Jamie, you're, you're talking about some stuff that really has big implications here because the cost of getting a program at a major university on board it's high, and it takes mm -hmm. time. It took us seven years to get the USF PFP program uh, online. Seven years. And who knows how much in, in capital and cost to do that? So, um, yeah, uh, you know, we we. Our career path needs to have a lot more structure. And if there's anything that we can do uh, through MNY to help bring that to some sort of uh, reality, you know, we're, we're, we're all about that. So. so, Mac, I'm curious about something on more of a personal level. Like you, you start a lot of things and you do a lot of stuff. And I just want to know, how do you like take care of your mental health and you, you know, I'm just curious for my own knowledge. <laughs> I've, I, I've developed this cloning ability. No, let me stop. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> um, so if you notice everything that I've created, uh, I'll give an example. The Four Money Bears was something that I wrote six, seven years ago uh, when I was an advisor and I was trying to help my clients start the conversation about money. So that was something that was created years ago and just folks asked about creating a digital platform. And that's how Finlit Tech started, financial literacy technology is to build a bridge to financial literacy financial technology. Our, our new platform that Jamie was gracious enough to be a, ghost, uh, a guest on was uh, Motivate Your Money. So Motivate Your Money, uh, so Four Money Bears is for kids, Motivate Your Money is for grown folks. So that was actually the title of my first book that I wrote before the Four Money Bears. And just realize that, you know what, I think we're in a different age, a different time. We need to digitize that. And so the MNY platform that you see is a digital iteration of my book and my thought stream there. Um, and then uh, MNY is the most recent creation uh, of mine. But that's that's something that I helped to create in conjunction with the University of South Florida and the students there. And just so that a few more people know who Matt Gardner is than who some of these other students are. So everything that I have created is in line with just more financial education, more financial literacy. And I think it's just creating platforms for different audiences and for different areas that, uh, you know, the, the message is the same, just help educate people and help get people in a better financial position, either through a book, either through a conversation or either through finding it as a career path. 
one follow up that what do you think's the next uh, medium that you're most excited about? Meaning, right, you've done podcasts, apps, books, you know, a 501c3 fraternal organization. But when you're just looking at the market today, right, like, I probably wouldn't put that in as like a medium, but it kind of is, right? Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, uh, sure. like direct. Yeah. You know, it, it's probably not the best way. It's probably more of like, that's probably like a traditional community, like mm-hmm. uh, town hall style, mm-hmm. right? Forum, right? Like yeah. it's yeah. creating a network forum. Uh, so it is, yeah, uh, for sure. But uh, what, what do you, what's one to like look out the world today? What do you think's next? Do you think it's, you think we're going to have a move back to apps? Cause like, you know, I was talking with somebody like apps blew up and then they kind of faded a bit and actually, um, people move back to web browser based stuff over apps mm-hmm. again, which was super mm-hmm. interesting to see that move, right? Because um, mm-hmm. everybody thought the whole world was moving to tablets and we've actually kind of, tablets kind of died again, right? Like it's a super interesting thing that like, I think it's like 1% now of web users are using tablets. Like it's yeah. phones kind of killed the tablet and, and yeah. therefore yeah. works now being done less so on tablets and back on computers. I don't know, just I'm rambling here, but you, you're in that <laughs> fin, FinTech and, and media yeah. world. So I'd love to hear some thoughts on that quickly too. Yeah, what we're, we're seeing, um, we're seeing, as you said, Jamie, trends to the, the phones aren't going anywhere. Digital isn't going anywhere. We are seeing trends in, in, in sort of gamification. So gamifying a lot of things or picking up a lot of steam. Uh, I know when I was working with eMoney uh, for their incentive app, uh, a lot of what they're working to do is what we're working to do then is to is to get folks to just be involved and do things, especially when it comes to their finances, and not make it seem like you're really dealing with your finances. Uh, so we're seeing a, a, an uptick in gamification for sure. We're seeing banks buying uh, gamification, even though the, the the fintech bubble has slowed down a bit. We're seeing uh, we, we are seeing that we're seeing we're looking we're seeing financial institutions finding different and unique ways to engage markets and the 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 the. the the Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Zs are the folks that folks are really still looking to engage in. They're finding that gamification is a way to go to do that. And that's why we're building the, the app that we're building. The Four Money Bears is actually going to be rolling out Q4 of this year. And, and Junior Achievement Tampa is going to be the first JA in the country uh, to use it. So, Yeah, that's exciting. Well, that's a good announcement. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we are. As you said, we're, we're, we're juggling a lot of things here, but um, we are really excited to, to have that launch and um, really excited to be partnering with Junior Achievement. Because when you ask folks, OK, when talking about young people and money, you know, who the first person you think about and JA is usually what comes up, comes to mind. And they have a, the BizTown. I don't know if you all have kiddos, but JA has a BizTown platform where your kids go to JA and they get their first jobs and they get their first paychecks. And so. The full money bears Berryville is going to be uh, utilized there, and then after that, we'll, we have commitments from uh, JA Orlando, and then we'll just uh, just keep moving around and, and and seeing who's up next. That's awesome. Well, I have to be respectful of time as always, and uh, we'd like to kind of close out with one question too, which uh, we ask most people: What does uh, what does freedom mean to you, Mac? Freedom means to me the ability to um, live with the consequences of my actions. So, you know, um, I I grew up in the Caribbean. Dad's from, uh, you know, not best means. Mom's from Haiti, not from the best means. And uh, sometimes folks grow up in places where no matter what you do, no matter how hard you work, you, you you don't really necessarily have control of the consequences of your actions. So uh, I feel really blessed, really fortunate that we live in a place, we live in a country where, hey, you know what, you work hard, you bust your butt, you do great things and you get your stuff right, get your money right, get your mind right. Uh, there can be really great consequences for it. That's a wonderful answer. That's a that's a different one. I think we've got them from anyone else. So that's uh, I, I really like that. I like when I get different answers, and uh, that's a beautiful one, Mac. Hopefully, uh, it wasn't too. I hope it wasn't too, uh, yeah. <laughs> too too high level, but it, it's just what came to mind. 
No, they're, they're, they're always thought provoking, right? Like they, yeah. they kind of make you question your own answers to it is, mm -hmm. is it the way that I always look at asking it. Is it kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, what does that mean to me then too, as somebody mm -hmm. else's view of it? And uh, yeah. it kind of helps you redefine how you want to look at your own perceptions of the world. But yeah. Uh, yeah. thank you for everything you're doing with MY and MNY fraternity and mm -hmm. uh you know four money bears i i you know i love i've loved that for years mac so i'm still a huge supporter of that anytime i can be uh thank it's you, awesome you, so you. if anyone hasn't checked that out check that out too get a book give it to your kids and you have whole packets and everything that come too so it's uh yeah it's not it's awesome. just a book yeah. anymore <laughs> amen amen and so. soon an app will be out as well folks and, the app will be yeah. out soon. and soon to be an app they're back you heard it here <laughs> For sure, yeah. for sure. Thank you both so much for having me. I love the work that yeah. you're doing, Jamie. Anna, you know, keep keep pushing through, man. The journey continues. Yeah. Well, Anna, Mac, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Everyone else, thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Framework Podcast. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode.